economic growth of 3.5% to 5.8%. Tanzania, on the other hand, has seen a surge of luxury goods and chain restaurants. To talk to me about this, we are joined by Sam Mukorosi of Africa, the good news, and he's, the, of course, the chief operating officer there, as well as the assistant editor as well. Uh, so do join us on our conversation as on Twitter as well as Facebook. We welcome your views this morning. Sam, good morning to you. Good morning, Faith. Now let's talk a little bit about Namibia's 35 to 5.8% uh, growth rate. What has contributed to that and particularly the various industries which have? Well, Faith, um, Namibia, like most African countries, is endowed with much mineral wealth. Mm -hmm. um, it actually is the fourth largest producer of uranium in the world. Okay. And of course, we know that uranium is responsible for nuclear power generation. Mm. So some of that growth has come from there. There is also gold. Um, the port in Valfus Bay on the west coast of yeah. Africa, obviously, um, is also important for logistics and trade and shipping. Uh, so, so, yeah, so, so some of that has contributed to Namibia's growth. As well as, I mean, look at the political uh, transition that has taken place in the country. Obviously, since gaining its independence from uh, South Africa in mm -hmm, the 90s. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we've seen that the, the country has managed to be quite a peaceful nation. How yes. have they been able to sustain that peace? Yes. Just a thought, though. It's interesting to think that uh, South Africa was, in fact, a colonizer itself. I, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that, uh, that Namibia got independence from, from South Africa. But um, that's obviously history. The present is that um, it's a fairly small... Uh, population of only 1.3 million people, yeah. I and mean, that's smaller than the population of Soweto. Uh, but still uh, quite peaceful, quite democratic, uh, strong uh, constitution, and I think a lot of that has, has um, contributed to the, to the stable political environment. Moving a little bit to East Africa, we're seeing that a lot of developments are taking place in Dar es Salaam, for example. Mm -hmm. What has contributed to those new development structures that are that are currently taking place there? Right, right. So uh, Tanzania has been also um, the recipient of a lot of of the commodities boom of the last decade. That's that's slowed down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's helped uh, Dar es Salaam and other cities in in, in the area to grow. Um, their, their port is also quite important for them. Um, mm -hmm. So they've seen a lot of trade uh, growth and, and logistics. Um, they've got uh, soda ash up in the north um, towards towards kind of uh, Rwanda and, and, and Burundi on that side, mm. uh, towards uh, the lakes. So so a lot of that has also developed um, Tanzania quite a bit. Uh, beautiful country. Um, so tourism has also been, uh, been growing. Uh, quite a stable country, um, specifically in that East African uh, region. You know, we, we, we know about the, the, the troubles up in the... In, in the, mm. in the in the Horn of Africa, yeah. um, but down in the Tanzania uh, region, a lot more stable, a lot more peace. Um, so tourism has been quite um, quite on the rise there. Well, it looks like a lot of foreign investment coming out from there. I mean, but let's look at the, the actual investment uh, partnerships that we've got. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. India, for example, wants to make partnerships there. Um, Brazil, yes. um, we've got a lot of uh, uh, Asian companies and countries right. wanting to make investment right. within right. Africa. Right. Is that a sense of where Africans are supposed to sit back and go, wow, that's actually great because we're yes. attracting a foreign market? Or is it a case of actually extorting the resources that are in Africa? Right. Faith, I get this question a lot, and I think... You know, trade is, is always has to be a balanced uh, kind of discussion. Mm. So if uh, you come to my house and you say, you want my gold, you want my diamonds, etc., there's a responsibility on me to say, how is that helping my people? How is that helping our economy grow? And so it's important to talk about things like beneficiation. So we're not going to just ship raw material out of out of Africa mm. to China to Brazil um, you know sugar um, has has obviously been growing quite a lot in, in Brazil and, and coming to, to Africa so we want to say well we can also pr process some of our own sugar and ship it across to there so it has to be balanced it has to be a conversation that we have with our trading partners especially in the space of other e emerging economies mm. you know um, your Brazil's your China's your India's um, obviously the BRICS um, a discussion is quite important for South Africa, but also for the rest of the continent. And it has to be about let's trade, but let's make it fair and let's make it balanced for both uh, for both trading partners. Now, very quickly before we close off, where does this put South Africa? I mean, are we also looking at partnering with many other African countries, and are we also standing an opportunity to gain from those investments? Well, there's been um, there's been a lot of leadership being provided by Africa now with Kosana um, um, Zuma in uh, at the AU and you've heard about um, Pumzile um, Lambanguka as um, the head of 
the, the UN UN's women, women um, yeah. development, etc. So, so, so it's good to see South Africa taking its its role there. Sam, just on that note um, of Pumzile's uh, appointment currently, mm. um, where could we be seeing South Africa? Does that put us more in a more important position uh, with regards to being taken seriously as a country, as yes. a developing nation? Still? Yes, yeah. yes, I think so. And but the issue for us is that we need to make sure that. Um, we're integrated with the rest of the continent. We understand what's happening there um, because we're facing a lot of competition from China, a lot of competition from Europe mm. in terms of doing business in Africa. So we have to be smart about it. We have to be proactive about it. And we have to be humble. You know, a lot of um, people from the rest of the continent say yeah. we're a bit obnoxious <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> no, well, obnoxious is good as long as we're able to become leaders in that role. Right. Sam, I'm going to have to leave it there. But thank, thank you, you very much for joining us uh, this morning. We have been talking to Sam Korosi from Africa, the good news. He is the chief operating officer as well as assistant editor there. Do visit their website, www.africagoodnews.com. Africagoodnews.com. Thank you very much for joining us. Oh,